So the modern gold sovereign began production in 1817. It contains 7.32 grams of fine gold or 0.2354 troy ounces. So being a little bit shy of a quarter ounce. And obviously the coin weighs slightly more because it is a 22 carat coin. Now there are various sovereigns that we're gonna talk about today that have different designs and they're not necessarily the George and the Dragon and some are not actually produced by the Royal Mint. So you've got basically sovereigns from different countries which means like this Australia sovereign, they were produced in other branch mints for the Royal Mint. And then you have obviously the sovereigns that were produced in the UK by the Royal Mint. And uh, you've got sovereigns that have things like this privy mark, just to the left of the date there. And these are all produced by the actual Royal Mint or it's, like I say it's branch mints, you know, the India sovereign uh, and various ones. So these different designs are not really the ones we're talking about today, like the 2002, you know, celebrating Jubilee years of the Queen. Uh, 2022 is another one. You've got the 2005, which was, you know, still a Royal Mint design, but just a bit of a random one. They decided to do a different design that year. You got the 2012, 2017, and so on. Obviously the 1989 as well. But today I want to talk about some of the other coins, like you've got these private mints, like Popjoy Mint, uh, which does some coins with the Isle of Man sovereigns, which I'm just trying to find. Have one here. I have a couple here. Here we go. So you'll see here we've got the Isle of Man on the back and Elizabeth II. So this is the Machin portrait, which is also on you know your normal gold sovereigns. And this, it is the same spec as a sovereign, so it weighs the same, it's got the same gold content, it's a 22 carat, but obviously it has a different design, so it's not the usual George and uh, there on his horseback slaying the dragon. It is somebody like a Nordic looking, uh, maybe Viking type person slaying. It looks like they're slaying a person, to be honest. <laughs> it doesn't look like a dragon to me. Um, but yeah, you can see it's a, a similar design and it's, uh, you know, probably inspired by, uh, not copied, but influenced by the George and the Dragon, you know, of uh, Mr. Pristrucci. So, yeah, I'm not sure about that design. It looks a bit, uh, a bit interesting. You know, I do like the design. I like the uh, edge pattern there. But yeah, not sure who they're slaying. Could be another warrior or maybe, uh, you know, an innocent person there, who knows? So there are some similarities, like I say, but the main thing I wanna talk about is the different sovereigns, even though they are the same gold content and you know they do have the, the gold there that the proper sovereign does, they are just that little bit different. So Popjoy Mint is one. There are other ones like the London Mint Office, Hattons of London, uh, and so on. You know, there are various I've heard them described as coin marketing companies. So they're basically companies that get coins made. You know, maybe they don't have their own mint, but they'll get them made to the specification of a sovereign. So it's got the same gold content. It has, you know, the same amount of pure fine gold in there. But some of them are charging massive premiums for these low mintage coins. And some of them, you know, they are low mintage. They maybe have 5,000 or... 4,999 coins minted, which is less than things like the Queen's Beasts, you know, and the Tudor Beasts. It is a low mintage coin, but low mintage doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be popular, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to command a premium to most collectors. So this is a half gram T-Rex coin, which I picked up because it's got a T-Rex on. You know, it wasn't uh, an extortionate amount of money, but it's not going to be, you know, low premium. The thing is, though, if you try and buy that or sell that on the second-hand market, you're waiting for somebody who likes dinosaurs as much as I do to come along and think, yeah, I'll pay a bit more for that. Something like the Tudor Beast, you know, people are going to pay a bit of a premium to collect the set because it's a big popular set from the Royal Mint. 
But these other branch mints, you know, again, they do have their collectors. Uh, like this is a Melbourne sovereign. It's got the M mint mark. So it was produced, whoops, pro it was produced for, you know, the, uh, from the Melbourne mint in Australia. Uh, but it is, you know, like an official sovereign, if you like. These other ones, yeah, someone might pick one up because it's kind of cool design, they like it, and it's the same spec as a sovereign. But just be wary of the various companies. When you are buying these coins new, not necessarily these ones, but some of the other ones, you know, I've had some on the channel before, which I have bought in the past, um, you know, sometimes celebrating or commemorating different occasions, things like D-Day and, you know, various uh, military things like that. And uh, yeah, they are a bit niche. So they're not official like Royal Mint produce them, sovereigns, but they are official in the sense that they do weigh and contain the gold content. So people might buy them for that reason, but just be wary of the premiums. So when they are uh, produced, you know, initially, there's a lot of hype and these, these companies are professional marketing companies. You know, they do often sell the coins out and they do seem to have a, you know, a steady flow of buyers, which they tend to uh, spam older people who maybe think they're doing something good and, you know, buying some coins that they can pass down. And, you know, they're not doing bad. They've got good intentions, but just the premiums that they pay, they don't make it worthwhile, if that makes sense. So if you were going to buy, for example, this for a thousand pounds as a bullion sovereign, you know, it's it's about three times the actual gold value. So, yes, you might buy something like a 1989 Sovereign by the Royal Mint, and that might have, you know, a similar premium. But it will actually, you know, trade around that on the second-hand market. Some of these other coins, you know, they will lose that premium pretty quickly. Like, you're just not going to get that from a dealer. Um you know, you've just got to be careful, really. So some of the gold proof coins that come from the Royal Mint, you know, they have the nice fancy boxes, the nice packaging. And yes, they are a bit of a premium, but people do generally pay that premium back. Um, you aren't going to get the same, you know, if you go to a dealer, you are going to struggle to get your premiums back there. So if you're purely worried about the gold, you know, as an investment, as a safe haven, all those good things, then... I would just say, you know, your basic bullion sovereigns, low premium gold, whether that's Britannia's, Krugerrands, they're going to perform generally better or at least be safer in the long run. Sure, there are some coins like these different designs that have done really well in the proof coins. You know, if you bought them and they were released, they have done pretty well. Some of the other years, though, that are just, you know, a random year like 2013 or 12 or sorry, 2013 or 11 or something like that. You know, they're perhaps not going to be as popular unless somebody has a particular, um, you know, affection to that year. Maybe it's a, a birth year or anniversary year or something like that. You know, maybe they would pay a bit more for those coins. But often, a lot of the times, you know, these premiums just get lost. So I've seen quite a few times people selling some of these uh, coins from coin marketing companies and they're trying to get the premium back that they paid or have seen online. And generally, it just doesn't happen. You know, they often get sold at a premium, uh, you know, a couple of percent over spot because most collectors just want the, you know, the Royal Mint stuff. Um, you know, something like this. Yeah, maybe someone would buy one or two, but I bought this at a relatively low premium. You know, it was the same price or even a bit cheaper, about, a, you know, a pound or something cheaper than uh, a normal sort of 2022 uh, half sovereign. And then I actually saw this for sale. So I bought this because I bought this first because I wanted to just have a few of the different designs, just to have something a bit different, just to see, you know, perhaps show on the channel. Um, and then, yeah, this popped up, you know, as cheap as a normal bullion sovereign. So that's why I ended up picking both up. Um, and yet yeah, there are other designs, like I say, they do mean something to some people, but just be wary that a low mintage doesn't mean it's going to be more valuable. And also that because it's, you know, all in fancy boxes, fancy packaging, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do well in the future. So to keep all the risks down, I would just have the risk of the gold price and just buy basic bullion sovereigns. Um, once you start to understand the market a bit more, maybe, yes, you could get a few other collectible pieces. 
And if you just like the design, you know, there's no harm in picking one up if you're paying a similar bullion price, um, you know, and just waiting for the gold price to ultimately go up in the future. Some of these, like I say, though, they do command a little bit of premium. You know, you'd expect to pay maybe 10 or 15 pounds more than a basic bullion sovereign with it being the special year. And proof coins, that could be a lot more. So just be wary, like I say, keep yourself safe and watch out for those premiums.